Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to people from different regions. First of all, I would like to thank you for participating of this tech webinar. And this webinar is the second of a series of three tech webinars that is promoting about line arrest application for lighting protection of the lines. In this presentation, we will be reviewing details about lighting effects on overhead lines, as well as the methods and procedures for improvement of the transmission line lighting performance. The agenda of this webinar, we start with a general overview about lighting activities on transmission lines, followed by the discussing lighting effects on transmission lines, procedures to improve the transmission line's lighting performance, a general overview about the process and procedures to do transmission line light analysis in order to evaluate the lighting performance. In case, some case studies, some examples of procedures for improvement of the overhead line in lighting performance, some common examples that we have been receiving uh, requests about how to protect the line and which best method to protect the light, and then the conclusions. We'd like to, we, we'd like to start this presentation with this picture showing a lighting striking on an overhead transmission line that allow us to the following questions. What happens when lighting strikes on an overhead and shielded or shielded line? Which are the main impacts of this event and how prevent these impacts? Which are the critical parameters that affect the lighting performance of the lines? And from the methods currently available for light improvement performance of the lines, which are the more effective for long term? During this webinar, we will be discussing and answering the questions above. In many countries, lighting has been reported as a major cause of no scheduled alters with rated voltage up to 230 kV. According to EPRI, in the United States, lighting flashover are the most frequent cause of a transmission line outages, resulting in direct costs to utilities of more than $1 billion per year in damaged or destroyed equipment. Lighting activities are more critical for transmission lines up to 245 kV. However, the fact is that even higher system voltage like 500 kV systems are exposed to the effect of the lines. Lighting performance on overhead lines have important consequences in many safety and tech aspects. The problem has special importance in countries or in regions with higher lack activities and or higher soil resistance. Although it is a fact that most of the non-scheduled outages are transitory in nature, in many cases this is still deemed by power supply utilities and their customers to be unacceptable. Power supply utilities themselves have verified the load losses caused by voltage secondary systems due to transitory outages caused by lightning activity. In some regions they found serious permanent damage on the system itself due to disturbances occurring on important lines. And finally, loss of power supply is critical for all modern industries, especially today as these customers are more reliant on sophisticated electronic equipment and special production process, which are very sensitive to momentary disturbance on the system. These facts have been taken by several power supply utilities and industrial consumers around the world and caused them to invest sometimes in partnership with universities and research centers in the development of research program and field studies, aiming basically to develop theoretical, theoretical studies to get a better understanding about the transient response of shielded and unshielded overhead lines struck by lightning, to get a better understand about the lightning incidence and its parameters which have influence on the transient behavior of the overhead lines and in the promotion of improvement along the critical sections of the overhead lines with poorer lighting performance, thereby increasing their reliability. Now we will start to discuss about lighting effects on transmission lines. Three main aspects are involved in the lighting performance of transmission lines. Discharge current characteristics we will be discussing in the following slides. Peak, peak value, time to crest and rate of rise. The attachment process between lighting channel and the transmission line components, how the components of the line respond after lighting striking, and the electromagnetic response of the overhead line struck by the lighting, in especial the transient response across the line insulation. Transmission line may present 
several different conditions, right? And due to the complexity of the phenomena involved, simulation tools and methodologies have been developed to evaluate the lightning response of overhead lines. Today, there are specific software available to evaluate the lightning performance of the lines. Transmission lines may present several different configurations for the towers, overhead conductors and tower foot resistors. This different configuration establish different transient response under lightning stress. Now you talk about what happens when lightning is striking on an unshielded line. If you consider the impedance of the discharge channel as being infinite, in a simplified way, when lightning strikes on the phase conductors of an unshielded line, the discharge current is divided, divided into the directions of the line generating transient voltage that travel along both directions of the line. Assuming an ideal line without losses and distortion, the transient voltage that appear across the isolated strings can be defined by the equation shown in below, which the, the voltage across the isolated strings is the product for the transient surge impedance of the line by the discharge current flowing in direction of the line. If the voltage across insulated strings is higher than the discharge voltage of the insulation, flashover will occur in this specific phase. Basically, all lighting striking on the structures or on the phase conductors of an unshielded line produce flashover along the insulation. If the gradient of the electrical field is high enough to keep the quenching arc, the flashover along the insulated strings will be followed by a short circuit current that leads to an outage trip. In general terms, for conservative analysis, we consider in the lighting analysis that all flash over currents on the insulator strings will lead to an outage trip. So, in summary, when lighting strikes on an unshielded line, basically all lighting will produce flashover along the insulation, and on a conservative base, this flashover will lead to an outage trip in the light. Now, what happens when lighting striking on shielded lines. When light strikes on a, the tower or on the shield wires of, an unshield, of a shielded line, transient voltage are generated and travel along the tower and the shield wires, increasing the voltage on the top of the tower. At the same time, induced voltage are generated on the phase conductors due to the coupling factors between the shield wire and the phase conductor. And the transient resultant voltage across the insulator strings depends on the transient voltage developed in the cross arms, on the induced voltage due to electromagnetic coupling, and the power frequency peak voltage due to lightning occurrence. The transient voltage across the insulator strings can be simplified, defined by the equation shown in this point, in which VISI is the transient voltage across the insulators, the cross arms is the transient voltage established on the cross arms. The induced is induced voltage due to electromagnetic coupling. And VPIF, PFI is the peak power frequency voltage. Disregarding the cross arm effect and considering that the induced voltage is the reason between the voltage on the top of tower with the coupling factor, we can simplify the equation for the voltage across the insulator strings by the equation shown in below. And this simplified equation gives us two relevant information for the proper lightning performance improvement of the lines. The first information refers to the direct relationship between transient voltage on the top of the tower and the transient voltage across the insulator strings. For improving the lightning performance of the line, we can check through this equation that you need to reduce the transient voltage on the tower of the top on the top of the tower, sorry. The second information shows us that a lower coupling factor results in higher transient voltage across insulator strings. As phase conductor closer to the shield wire is more coupled, for vertical and triangular configuration, the bottom phase is more exposed to higher voltage and, as a consequence, more exposed to back flashover occurrence. And back flashover occurrence happen on, on, on the specific phase if the transient voltage across the insulator strings is higher than their discharge voltage, as can you see in this picture. 
As shown in these previous slides, the transient voltage established across the line insulation depends on the transient voltage at the, tower of the, the top of the tower. In these next slides, we will be evaluating the parameters that affect this transient voltage. In a simplified way, the lightning strikes on the line can be represented by a wave shape type ramp function with a peak value i and a rise time defined by the time for reaching the peak value t. The tower model, in a simplified base, can be considered and evaluated as a transmission line model with transit time T1. Transit time means the time necessary for the wave to electromagnetic wave travel from the point 1, top of the tower, to the point 2, here considered the ground. And we'll be talking what happened when this incoming voltage reached the ground. For shielded lines, this is the resultant voltage across the, so the, the, on the top of the tower immediately after the lightning striking. That can be defined by the product between the discharge current and the equivalent surge impedance seen at the top of the tower. This equivalent surge impedance is defined by the shield wire configuration and by the tower impedance. For shielded lines, the transient voltage on the top of the tower and across the insulators depends strongly on the transient grounding system behavior. The effect of the grounding system starts when the tower transient voltage or incoming voltage reaches the grounding system at T1, defined as a trans time. At this time, if the grounding impedance differs from the tower impedance, the incoming voltage will suffer a reflection in a new voltage wave here colored as reflect wave, will be generated with magnitude and polarity that depend on the reflection coefficient. Reflection coefficient is, the, is given by the equation shown in the right side of the picture. If the ground impedance is lower than the tower impedance, then a negative reflection occurs, generating a negative reflect wave that will travel from the ground to the top of the tower, reducing the voltage on the top of the tower at at T2, considered as being twice the transit time. In the opposite way, if the ground impedance is higher than the tower impedance, a positive reflection occurs, generating a positive reflect wave that will travel from the ground to the top of the tower, increasing the voltage on the top of the tower at the same time T2. This explanation can be illustrated in the picture show in the right side of this slide. Here you have initially the transient voltage on the top of the tower without end reflection show peak value V1. This voltage remains the same until the reflect wave comes to the top of the tower in the time 2T or the twice the transit time. At this time, depending on the reflection coefficients being positive or negative, this wave shape changes this stiffness. In this case, consider a partial negative reflection showing the green uh, wave. We can check that the, the voltage across the top of the tower is reduced, as shown in the green curve. So the green curve shown in this picture is the result of the reflection uh, wave due to the negative uh, coefficient reflection through a lower tower foot resistance as compared with the tower uh, impedance. This graphic shows the effect of the ground system on the transient voltage at the top of the tower as a result of the very simplified simulation using ATP draw program. The simplified model represents the shield wires, towers, and tower foot resistance, here considered in a simplified way as a lamped parameter. In fact, the transient response of the grounding has a transitory nature. And here you are just considered for simplified, for a simplified way as a lamped parameter. But you can observe that for higher tower foot resistance, higher is the voltage across the top of the tower. And the effect of the grounding impedance starts when the, ref the negative reflective wave, in this case, reach the top of the tower, as shown in this indication. 
In case of shielding fire, what, what happens when a lightning discharge is striking directly on the face conductor instead goes to shield the wire? In this case, the shielding, shielding fail occurs and the result, the, uh, the transient response has similar behavior as for the case of shielded lines. In most of the cases, when you have shielding fail, the shielding fail leads to a flashover across the insulator strings followed by an outer, in a trip, a trip, an outer strip on the line, of the line. And induced voltage occurs when lightning strikes closer to the pole, poles or towers of the lines and due to the electromagnetic coupling generates transient of a voltage on the phase conductors. Usually, the induced voltage does not exceed a peak value of 300 kV. And for this reason, this condition induced voltage are more critical for systems up to 45 kV. Summarizing our discussions until here, when you have unshielded lines, basically all lighting strikes on unshielded lines will produce flashover along the insulator strings. For shielded lines, it's possibility of back flashover occurrence across the insulator strings and the transmission line lighting performance I discussed previously depends strongly on the transient grounding system behavior. Shielding fail occurs when lighting strikes directly on the phase conductors and flashover occurs as in case of the shielded lines. And finally, the induced voltage lightning strikes closer to overhead lines and due to electromagnetic coupling generates transient voltage along the insulation lines, along the light insulation, or along the lines. As I said before, it's more critical for system voltage up to 45 kV. Next step, we will be discussing about procedures to improve the transmission line lighting performance and their real effective effectiveness for improving the lighting performance. Knowing the lighting effects on transmission lines, the next step is understanding the methods and procedures for improving of the lighting performance, and then evaluate the most effective procedure for a specific application, usually taking account of the benefit versus cost balance and the long-term performance of the analysis. This evaluation comes from lighting studies using a specific software in which for the desired overhead line configuration is estimated the number of the line outage per 100 km. The analysis shall consider the current configuration of the line and other possible configurations, taking account different procedures to improve the line lighting performance. Here we will be talking about the main procedures current used for improving the lighting performance and their effectiveness. The first is increase the line insulation, adding insulation. In general terms for transmission lines, it means increase the dry arc distance of the insulator strings. How effective is this method? Does it work for both shielded and unshielded lines? What's the effect of the grounding system on the efficiency of this method? We'll be answering these questions in the case studies we'll be discussing in the next slides. The second procedure is improving the grounding system. Evaluate different arrangements and grounding configuration for better performance under transient conditions. Basically, you work at the reduction of the outage on the shielded transmission lines through the improvement of the uh, grounding performance. As you, as you see, so as you see from, from the previous slides, improving the grounding system behavior, we in increase the negative reflective wave coming from the grounds to the tower, reducing the voltage on the top of the tower, and as a result, reducing the transient voltage established across the insulator strings. How effective is this method for long-term performance? Which are the technical limitations? Does the soil resistive impact on the transient ground performance? These are answers that need to be responded before using this method as a solution for improving the lighting performance. The third procedure is adding shield wire on unshielded lines or the improvement of the shielding, perf uh, shielding performance for shielded lines. Basically, Reduction in the number of direct strikes on the phase conductors with increase of the conductor height, thereby increasing the width of the attractive area. It means that when you apply shielded wire on a shielded transmission line, this line is more exposed to light because you are increasing the width of the attractive area to the increase of the conductor height. And finally, 
the line surge arresters. That can be external gap light arrestor, call it EGLA, or no gap line arrestor, no gap energy, LA. We will be discussing in the next slides. Starting from the results obtaining theoretical analysis and knowing the target outage index for the line, methods and procedures to improve the lighting performance have been evaluated, taking account the cost-benefit balance. And from the current methods available for lighting improvement performance, in most of the cases, line surge arrestors, sometimes associated with the improvement of the transient browning behavior, are usually considered the most effective when you take into account the benefit cost balance and the long term application. Line arrestors are electrically connected in parallel with the insulator strings, and its protection philosophy consists in reducing the transitory voltage across the insulator strings, avoiding this way that their insulation level be exceeded. Line surge arrestors have been primarily used for light protection, but can also be applied in other cases like the control of switching over voltage. The concept is install line surge arrestors along critical sections of transmission lines with poorer lighting performance in order to reduce the unscheduled outage during the trip, reducing the system interruption and increase the system reliability. There are two different concepts and designs of line arrestor. The external gap line arrestor, called it EGLA, and the no gap line arrestor. Both designs have their advantage and weakness, and right now few publications are written on how to improve those weakness. Here you have a picture showing uh, uh, an example of a no ga external gap line arrest application, and here you have an example of a no gap line arrest application. In this case, the arrest is directly connected between phase and neutral. And in this reason, uh, per uh, permanent uh, continuous current flew through the arrest even at their continuous operating voltage. Line such arrests have been used for many different application fields. As I told you, primarily for lighting protection that can use about existing transmission lines with poor lighting performance, as well as for new transmission lines with high theoretical outage index due to line. Line such arrests have virtually eliminate and also interrupt the power supply for sensitive industrial process. And in case of overhead double circuit lines, virtually eliminating double circuit flashover, as you can see in the case example in the next slides. Line surge arrest can also be used for control of switching over voltage profile along the line. Substitute of poor prank insertion resistors it works very well together with controlled switching. And also for extended substation protection, reducing both amplitude and steepness severity of the incoming voltage entering at air or at GIS substations. In this case, elimination flashover risks near to the substation. Next step, we will be doing general comments about procedures and information need for doing transmission line and lightning analysis in order to get transmission line performance improvement. Basic information required for transmission line and lightning analysis. The system voltage, the basic configuration of the line, power type, phase to earth and phase to phase distance, if the line is shielded or unshielded, phase conductors and shield wire sags, span length between towers, conductor diameter, etc. Lighting activities of the region crossed by the overhead line, the ground flash dance concept we'll be talking in next slides. Ground system behavior, as you told you previously, has a strong influence on the final transmission line lighting performance when you have shielded lines. Altitude of the installation above the sea level. This is a very important parameter when you work in regions about or over 1,000 meters above the sea level because the critical flashover of the voltage of the insulation is reduced with higher, uh, for higher altitudes. Insulation characteristics and short circuit currents and temporary voltage conditions in case using line surge arrest for defining and specifying the proper arrest. This picture shows a ground flash density world map, expressed in terms of number of strikes in a given region per square kilometer year. But there are many technical publications reporting more reliable ground flash density for specific regions. This map has been supporting users 
in the improvement of the line performance of the lightning performance of their lines. In spite of many countries have their ground flash dense maps, there are still many countries without reliable information about this parameter. In this case, lightning analysis have been doing considering the keramic level, which defines the number of thunderstorm days per year for a given region. This picture shows the keramic level world map, but in the same, in the same case as ground flash dense map, there are specific keramic maps for specific regions or countries, and this information shall be used in absence of the ground flash density map. Starting from the keramic level and using the Segre general equation, the ground flash density can be estimated for the region based on the equation shown in the, in the bottom of the, of the right side of this, of this presentation. Ground flash density is 0.04 times the factor uh, in which you consider the keramic the the uh, effect. Also, which are the main parameters considered in the transmission line lighting performance analysis? The lighting strike point, if the lighting strikes on the top of the tower, on the shield wires, phase conductors uh, for the shielding lines or shielding fails. Discharge current characteristics, peak value, the steepness, charge involved, etc. The trans transmission line parameters, shield wire equivalent surge impedance, the electromagnetic coupling among shield wires and phase conductors, the transient response of the tower, the effect of the adjacent towers, transient response of ground system, and the disruptive insulation model considered. These parameters are essential for doing a transmission line analysis studies in order to get the current transmission line lighting performance and define methods and procedures for improving the performance of this specific line. This picture shows the probability of a lighting occurrence based on Segre data. This information is very important for lighting analysis because it gives us the probability of certain current be exceeded. And with this information in knowing the critical current that produces flashover or back, or back flashover for a line under analysis, it's possible to estimate the lighting performance in terms of outage on a statistical base. Currently, there are many tech publications showing information about lighting parameters from different lighting research stations. We can find many tech papers showing this information. Here you have the information about the steepness front of time for lighting based, also based on Segre data. We also have information about different regions in specific papers. In the next slides, we'll be talking about case studies, examples of procedures for improvement of the overhead lighting performance. Usually, these case studies are based on the most common requests for customers when they want to improve their lighting performance, transmission and distribution lighting performance. We start doing an analysis of 123, 123 kV line in which we want to know the effectiveness of adding insulation for a shielded and unshielded lines. Here you're looking for an unshielded line. The configuration of the lines are shown in the in, below, conductor number one, two, three, and that position along the line. The line insulation critical flash over 605 kV, considering seven insulators with pitch 145 millimeter per diameter 255. Ground flash density, considering this analysis, 6.7 strokes per square kilometer year. Average soil resistivity, 1,200 ohm meter. Average span of 300 meter. Tower foot resistance changing from 10 to 6 ohms. In this case, you, you are simulating uh, the line arrest application through a no gap line arrest with rate of voltage 108 kV. Two different analyses. First, evaluates the effect of the installation on the lighting performance for a specific 123 kV overhead unshielded line. And then, add the shield wire in this line and consider the effect of the installation in the same case but with the, sh the, sh the line now shielded. Analysis considered 7, 8, 9, and 10 installations. We are increasing the dry arc distance of the line through increasing the number of insulation discs. The result of this simulation can be seen in this picture. We have here different tower foot resistance from 10 to 60 ohms. 
And you can check in the case of unshielded line that even increase in the insulation from seven insulators to ten, in other words, increasing the critical threshold of a voltage to line from 605 to 835, the lighting performance is still bad. It's almost flat. We have a very small improvement of the transmission line lighting performance just adding the insulation in this unshielded line. When you add the shielded line, we can observe that adding insulation, we can improve the performance of the line. However, the good performance is still strongly dependent on the tower foot resistance. As, as final result is summary, adding insulation is not an effective method for the improvement of the lightning performance of overhead unshielded lines. Some of the effectiveness for shielded lines depending on the tower foot resistance value and configuration. The second example shows us how effective is installed TLEAs at every other tower for unshielded lines. You have the unshielded lines show in, in this picture. Line insulation 605 kV is also 123 kV line. Ground flash depth 6.7 strokes per square kilometer year. Average soil resistivity 1,200 ohm meter. Average span 300 meter. The tower resistance changing from 10 to 40 ohms. Inline surge arrestor type, no gap inline arrestor with rated voltage 96 kV. We are here evaluating the light performance for a specific 123 kV overhead and should line adding line suggerator at every other tower. For lightning striking on the tower protected by TLA, lightning striking in the middle of the span between the protected and unprotected towers, and lightning striking on the unprotected towers. We can set check here, consider number one, the protected tower. Number two, unprotected towers, we are consider lightning strikes on the tower and the pole number one, on the pole number two, in the middle between poles 1 and 2. The summary of the results can be seen in this picture. Here you have different tower foot and resistance. We have, the in the, in the case of TLEA at every tower, we have for lower foot and resistance, in case of striking one, just 0 0.6, 0 0.6 outage per 100 kilometer year. However, when you increase the tower foot resistance, example for 25 ohms, we have a high level of 16.1 outers per 100 kilometer year. When light is striking in the point number two, we have higher outer strip. And higher outer strip also happens when the light strikes between points one and two. As you cannot control the lightning discharge, lighting can happen in same point in any point of the line, we can observe that Lightning uh, is tall, line arrest at every two towers is not an effective method for improving the protection uh, of the unshielded line for direct strokes, even in case of higher insulation. This method can be efficient for protecting the line against induced voltage. In this case, transient analysis shall be done to establish the optimum distance between line surge arrests. The third example shows us how effective is installed the shield wire uh, uh, on a 33 kV distribution line? It's another very common question. Many customers have distribution lines up to 45 kV, more specific 33 kV, and you want to install shield wire in order to improve the transmission, the distribution line performance. Which is the effective of this method? This example shows a system of 33 kV. Line insulation critical flash over voltage 315 kV, three insulators with 656 mm pitch by 225 mm diameter, ground flash dense 6.7 strokes per square kilometer year, average, average soil resistivity of 1000 ohm meter, average span 210 meter, tower foot resistance changing from 5 to 30 ohms. In this case, you are considering ground configuration, most common in distribution networks, rods. And in this case, soil ionization considering this analysis. Usually for higher discharge currents and higher impedance, the soil ionization works in order to provide better lighting performance for distribution networks. Line surge arrestor type, no gap line arrestor with rated voltage of 27 kV. Two different analysis, comparative analysis between 
the lighting performance for a specific 33 kV line, overhead line, sh shielded and shielded lines, and comparative analysis between adding a shield wire and install line such a resin on this specific line. We can see the results in this uh, picture. We have here the uh, first column, first four columns, information regarding the shielded 33 kV line, in the other columns, information about adding a shield wire. The first column is the, in the and the fifth column refers to the current configuration, uh, highlight in red column. The second column is when you protect the unshielded line with one line such a raster on the top face because it's the most exp exposed face for lighting striking directly. The third column you are applying a raster on points number three, top face and top and point two is the outer external uh, bottom face, which is also exposed to directly strikes. And the fourth case, you are applying a resin on preface. Same happened, but now in case of adding shield wire. We can observe from the results that adding shield improves significantly the lighting performance improvement. Uh, but a good lighting performance still depends on the ground system behavior. When comparing the light and surgery rest installation just on the highest phase of the shielded line with the shielded line application, is the column number two with column number five, it's possible to observe a similar lighting performance. However, line surgery rest shows a better benefit versus cost balance. Now adding two line surgery rest on the top, on the middle phase, most exposed to direct strokes, as you can see in the pictures. 3 and 5, the lighting performance for a shielded line is much better than adding shielded wire. Adding shielded, as a result, adding shielded wire on a 33 kV and shielded line is not a good technical solution for the improvement of the line lighting performance against direct strokes, unless you have a very low ground system behavior, like 10 ohms or minus. Sometimes you need to consider 5 ohms as the threshold limit in order to get a good light performance when you install shielded wire on 33 kV distribution line. For inducing voltage, adding shielded wire can be a good methodology, a good process, and you can get good results. Anyway, uh, lighting analysis shall be done in order to evaluate the light performance of the line in this case. The fourth example is adding the second shielded wire on a shielded 123 kV line. The details of the line are shown in this picture. Line ground flash to 600, uh, line, line insulation 605 kV, ground flash density 6.7 strokes per kilo square kilometer year, average soil resistivity, the same as in previous case, 1200 ohm meter, average span 300 meters, tower foot resistance changing from 10 to 6 ohms, and line of such a resin type no gap line of resin with rated voltage 108 kV. Two analyses. First, evaluate the different the effect of additional shield wire on the lighting performance of a specific 123 kV overhead shielded transmission line. And also do comparative analysis between the effect of the second shield wire and the line of rest installation on the lighting performance for this 123 kV line. The results are shown in this picture. Uh, like in the uh, previous case, the concurrent configuration for one shield wire and added the second shield wire I highlight in red color. Second column show for one shield wire the installation of a rest on, on the bottom face. In this case, as you have shield wire, the bottom face is the most exposed face because it's, uh, there are, uh, it's less couplet face because the conductor phase are closer, uh, sorry, are more distance from the shield wire. In this case, the, this, this phase is less couplet, and for this reason, higher transient voltage are established on this specific phase, with higher probability of back flashover occurrence. So, you start protecting shield line in case of vertical or triangular lines on the bottom phase. The third column, you are installing the bottom in the middle phase, in the, quad core, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the fourth column, column in all phase. Similar configuration for two shield wires. We can observe that adding the second shield wires improving significantly the lively lighting performance. Two shield wires reduce 
the equivalent shield wire surge impedance, as well as increase the coupling factor among shield wires and phase conductors. As a result, transient voltage on the tower top, as well as across insulator strings, are reduced. However, as you can see from the results, a good lighting performance still strongly depends on the ground system behavior. When comparing two shield wires with line arrest installation just on the bottom phase of the line with one shield wire, it's possible to observe a slightly better performance for the configuration when one line arrests. Now adding two line arrests on the bottom and on the mid phase improves significantly the lighting performance for the tower footing values up to 25, 30 ohms. And so this shows us that uh, adding line arrests especially when you have tower foot resistance between 20 and 30 ohms, is much more effective than install the second surge arrest. Of course, we are talking here in new projects because it's not, let's say, it's not a convenient procedure to install the second shield wire on an existing line. So you are talking about a new line in which you evaluate in both possibilities. One shield wire adding such a line surge arrest against two shield wires. And the results show us that adding one shield wire, uh, applying one line with one shield wire and adding line arrests on critical points, critical section of the line, results in much better lighting performance for the line. Finally, the last example, we show the case of a 245 kV double circuit overhead line. Line insulation flash over 1040 kilovolts, ground flash dense, similar like in the previous case, 6.7 strokes per square kilometer year, average soil resistivity, 1500, 15 ohm meter, average span, 320 meters, tower foot resistance, uh, evaluation from 20 up to 100 ohms, line surge arrest type, no gap line arrest with rated voltage 198 kV. Three different evaluations in this case. Reduce the total number of tripping for line for both circuits to a target level, reduce or eliminate the risk of double circuit tripping, or reduce the number of shielding fails. We can observe that for double circuit lines, double circuit flashover are most of the time very detrimental to power quality, and for this reason, most of the nighting analysis involving double circuit line have been addressed to avoid double circuit flashover. The results of the simulation are shown in these two pictures. Uh, on the top, you have a general information about the transient response of the line and the, the, uh, the number of outage of the line per 100 km year. And below, in the second table, we are showing information about the double circuit flashover. We can see different configurations. The first is the current configuration. Second configuration is just adding one arrest in one circuit on the bottom face. Third configuration, adding two arrests, just one circuit. The fourth configuration, configuration adding three arrests and just one circuit. And then other configuration, adding arrests in both circuits. The, just for comparison proposed, I would like to discuss the columns number four and number five, showing three arrests installed on all phases of one circuit versus the case number five showing two arrested installed just on the bottom phase, but for both circuits. When we evaluated the general performance of the line for these two cases, we can observe that installing arrestors on the bottom phase of both, both circuits results in a better lighting performance for the line. In other words, if you want to improve the overall lighting performance, is more interesting, is more efficient, apply arrest, stop arrest on both circuits. However, when you look for the table below, in which show us details about double circuit flashover, we can evaluate that when you stop arrest on three phase of just one circuit, you have zero flashover, zero double circuit flashover. It means no risk of double circuit flashover. While in the other case, although show us better general light, overall lighting performance, give us a probability of double circuit flashover for higher tower filter resistance values. So depends on the consideration, depends on the improvement you want to do 
you need to choose between the star resistors. Just one circuit or star less resistors, but in both circuits. This picture shows the example. In the left side, you are looking for the reduction of the total number of clipping. In this case, you are talking about a problem in Natal with higher torque foot resistors in which arrests are stored and no phase for both circuits. In this case, the probability of outage for in this specific tower is zero, although there are probabilities of back flashover in the neighboring towers depending on the tower foot resistance value of the protected tower as well as the unprotected tower. It needs to be evaluated during lightning performance analysis. And the right side, you have protection against double circuit tripping, in which you have arrested stolen in no phase for just one circuit. All phases in one circuit, you eliminate double flashover circuit and also reduce the number of tripping to an unprotected circuit. So, depends on the philosophy customer wants to consider, you can decide by store rest just in one circuit and, and protect the line against double flashover uh, risk or store rest in both circuits to improve the overall performance of the line. These are the case examples I'd like to show you. These are very common examples, very common application case we've been discussing with customers along the years we've been working in this area. The softwares, uh, the, these analysis were done using the Sigma SLP software. TE has license for this software and just to, ju 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 just to provide you the, the source of this analysis. As conclusion of our uh, webinar, in many countries, lightning has been reported as the major cause of an scattered outage on overhead shielded and unshielded subtransmission and transmission lines with rated voltage up to 245 kV. Although we know that even higher system voltage like 500 kV are also exposed to outage due to lightning. This fact has been taken up by several power supply utilities and industrial consumers which have lived then to invest sometimes in partnership with universities and research centers in the promotion of improvements along the critical section of the overhead lines with poor lighting performance, thereby increasing their reliability. Due to, due to the complexity of the phenomena involved, specific software have been used in the transmission lines lightning analysis. Lightning evaluation for a specific overhead line considered transient analysis for evaluating the current line configuration as well as to select the proper procedure for improvement of the lighting performance. Usually, an economic analysis taking account of the benefit versus cost allow us to obtain an optimized solution for the lighting performance improvement. Among the methods currently used for improvement of the overhead line's lighting performance, line surgery rest installed along the critical sections of the line with poorer lighting performance have been usually considered as the most effective for long-term performance. Sometimes, Line surgery rest added by improvement of the grounding system has been uh, providing better cost, better benefit cost relationship. Talking specific about line surgery rest application, in order to get a good solution in the tech or economic standpoint, studies shall be done to select the TLA properly in terms of electrical and mechanical requirements, as well as evaluate the proper design for long-term performance and optimize the quantity and the location of the line arrested again along the line. The improvement observed in the transmission line lighting performance if line surgery rest is stolen along the critical point of the overhead lines proves the efficiency and the reliability of the line surgery rest application. Good field experience improving results obtained in the lighting performance improvement of the overhead lines have been encouraging more and more users to develop drugs in research programs in the evaluation of line such arrest application. And finally, currently technical activities in research and developed projects have been done in a way to diffusing technical information about lighting improvement performance of overhead lines, to obtain detailed information about lighting activities and their parameters, which are very important when you do the lighting performance analysis and you want to evaluate the general performance of the line to develop new models and arrangements for grounding configuration systems with better performance under transient conditions. To increase the line arrest application field and its reliability, 
through evaluating limestone diuretic energy requirement for lighting activities, analyzing and evaluating all the application for limestone diuretic, such as application compact lines, control of switch on the voltage profile along transmission lines with 500 kV and above, upgrading system voltage with existing line insulation, and use line surgery for extended station protection. And finally, to encourage more and more users and researchers in the participation of lightning studies programs. That's all. I'd like to thank you again for your participation. And now you are open for questions in case you have some questions. There is one question that came in, George, and um, one of the attendees is asking if a copy of the presentation can be made available. Sure. We'll be able to provide information to our attendees, no problem. Okay. And we will send that out. Also, the recording of this uh, web webinar will be available on our TE website, and a link to that will be sent to everyone who, who registered. In addition to the presentation you'll be sending to all of you, please feel free to contact us in case you have some doubt or need any additional information about the line arrest application or about how to improve transmission line lighting performance. So it'll be a pleasure for us to talk with you with more details about this area. Thank you so much again. Thank you very much, everyone.